Now then, welcome back to the Brew Shed. Uh, today's very dull here in West Yorkshire, uh, so thanks for joining us yet again on Doorstep Brewing's Weather Watch. Uh, yeah, all jokes aside. Uh, so yeah, today I'm kegging up a Thialyze Pale Ale, which I brewed a couple weeks ago, um, using WLP 077, which is a new White Labs yeast. White Labs, not sponsored. Uh, that I believe has something switched on inside it um, that basically can process styles within the malt and the hops that you provide it with. Uh, I don't know very, uh, I don't know a lot based on how it all works. Uh, I know that there's compounds that can be unlocked and general yeast doesn't tend to be able to access those compounds. However, this one does. Uh, there are other yeasts that are made by Omega uh, that are genetically modified, which unfortunately we're not able to get here in the UK, I wish we did, uh, but obviously that's another subject and more of a political one I think, and, or more of a, a, a viewpoint and stand on where you feel on genetically modified products. Anyway, that said, so yeah, I brewed this using 250 grams of Cascade uh, in the mash, as well as I think just shy of 100 grams, 150 grams in the kettle side of things. Uh, all the last editions going in at five minutes, uh, so I think it was like 50 grams boil, 50 grams at five, uh, sorry, 25 at 10 and 25 at five minutes. That's right, yeah, got my head around it now. Uh, however, the base malt was also all Vienna malt because I remember listening to the Hop Edition podcast where they had uh, the chap Lance, uh, not my namesake, uh, from uh, Omega Brewing and he said that they didn't notice any real difference or it, it more led to a more negative impact on when you're using aroma and hop stand um, hop additions. So I decided to this time just go old school, all classic. Uh, I did dry hop, only 150 grams of Cascade. So it is all Cascade, all Vienna. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the way it's turned out to be fair. It's interesting for you into using thiol yeasts. Uh, I've not really got much of that Sauvignon Blanc character that people go on about, but then this has produced really sort of peachy, fruity aromas. Um, it's quite insane actually, I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, perfect 5.3%, nice beer to be drinking in warm weather. Uh, except I say that, I'm kegging it, I'm going on holiday tomorrow. Uh, so tre trekking across Europe, uh, going to a beer festival, so I might even do a bit of uh, holiday blogging, you know, get into that market, tap, uh, tap the resources of YouTube. Uh, but yeah, when I do return, I do plan on doing some more brewing videos, uh, one including a decoction mashed Czech pills. Uh, which I've done before, uh, trouble decoctions are a pain in the backside, but definitely a noticeable difference on the beer in terms of the malt profile and everything else. But anyway, again, get sidetracked. Uh, so yeah, on with the kegging. So here we are kegging the thialized IPA. I turned off the glycol chiller on it yesterday, so the temperature's ramped up ever so slightly. Um, so here we are using the Brutals filter, which is adapted with a one and a half inch to two inch tri-clamp adapter. I use obviously the two inch tri clamps on the brew tools uh, but yeah it works pretty damn well at filtering quite heavily ipas uh, i've done a couple of hot drops on this as you can see in this rather lovely attractive bucket here so nicely transferring through the uh the pipe there a spunning valve just to regulate the transfer to keep the pressure level and equal uh, so we don't get any uh, clumping up of hops within the filter but it seems to be doing its job so as you can see, the filter has definitely done its job. See how much it's dropped out. That's what I like about the uh, this modular design. Obviously the hop drops have done pretty damn well. But yeah, it's a quality piece of kit. Uh, again, not sponsored. Uh, just say things how I generally find them. I did try to use bouncers at one point. Uh, they do work, but I was finding the capacity sort of clogs up very, very easily. Um, but on the whole, this has been what I would consider a worthwhile investment. A uh, couple of teasing issues with it that I've uh, spoke to Brutals about. Uh, they were extremely well, uh, sorry, extremely quick in responding. Uh, and again, can't really fault the customer service from Brutals in any way, shape, or form. You always do pay a little bit extra for certain stuff, but the backup you always get for these companies are always second to none, I find. But again, speaking our find it rather than being sponsored to do so. But if you don't want to sponsor me, send us a load of brand new kit, because who don't like new kit, you know what I mean? Cheers mate, thanks. 
It's just the all important pouring side of things. Let's have a taste. Do they want to flake with that? Also remember, foam is flavour. Yeah, baby. So yeah, uh, let's have a taste. It's peachy. Uh, definitely, definitely like stone fruit character. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Of course, nobody wants to see uh, a video of my arms, do they? Um, but yeah, no, this is tasting absolutely fantastic. There's still quite a bit of hot material in it. Very, very fine, uh, tiny hot particles that are coming through. But obviously, they'll settle out once it sits in the keg for a week or so, which obviously I won't be here for, as I've already mentioned. Uh, however, looking forward to it when I come back. Um, but yeah, the, the head retention is insane to say it's single hop. Uh, sorry, single uh, malt, uh, which was the Weyermann Vienna. Or Weyermann, however you pronounce it. Um, but the, the lacing on it is in, insane, it's just just clings to the side of the glass and of course the colour's pretty damn nice as well, it's like a off yellow gold, uh, a bit muddy because of the hops, again that should uh, come completely bright I would imagine, well I'm hoping, not completely bright, what the hell am I on about, uh, just a lot brighter in colour, um, but yeah the you definitely get a load of peach on the nose, some of that cascade sort of um, citrus lingers a little bit which i'm assuming from the dry hop uh, that i put in um do really like cascade uh, no way near used enough in beers um seem to remember having another half all cascade i think it was all cascade everything or something daft like that at the time i can't remember it's a few years ago now since i've been able to enjoy other half beers and being able to go on holiday tomorrow's already places but uh, that's that's another thing um yeah this this is pretty damn good uh really really tasty for 5.3 percent um, we'll definitely use that yeast again or definitely want to try and seek out some more of the, uh, the maybe the GM modified ones if we can try and find a way of getting them into the country. I know that was heavily discussed on the Hop Edition podcast, uh, especially the Cosmic Punch, which seems to be, uh, you know, mentioned a hell of a lot. Oh, and by the way, of course, Weather Watch again, I mentioned right at the start of this video that it's absolutely rubbish outside and it was overcast and cloudy, but uh, in the meantime of kegging this beer, sun's come out, perfectly blue skies. I mean, there's some dark clouds in distance but you know what else is there for people to talk about in england other than the weather and the current you know miserable you know economic climate that we're in but you know i think everyone's experiencing that somehow but when in darkness there's always beer so thanks yet again for another video uh, and the opportunity for people to enjoy these videos more to the point uh, i don't think i've ever bothered doing them I keep saying this every single video so far um but yeah, really, really, really appreciate the feedback. Uh, cheers.